That's so very, very good coming from you. Uh, I'm going to look at the I'm We're just showing the whole world. Yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> Are you Vaishnav? Therefore, we need to take some film. Yeah, I'm going 
क्या करते हैं एक कट्टा सुन लो और बोलो काम नहीं कोई कर रहे हैं give a picture of his divine personality as seen by similarly exalted great Vaishnavas as he himself. Shrimati Shamarani Didi so wonderfully explained the precepts which Srila Prabhupada brought to the Western world how he gave the most basic elementary precepts of the philosophy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and explained them in such a digestible way that the people of the Western world could be thoroughly convinced. Could be thoroughly convinced that first of all, there is a God, that God exists and that that God is accessible to us. He is not dead, and he is not blind, and he is not deaf. But actually, he is approachable by us, by a certain method. He is approachable by the method of pure, loving, devotional service to his lotus feet, and that he is a supreme personality, that he is not devoid of qualities and devoid of characteristics. He is not Nirgun Brahma, but he is Swagun Brahma. He has all qualities. And what kind of qualities does he have? He has inconceivable qualities. He has inconceivable depth of these qualities. Shadaishwarya Purano Bhagavan, that he is full of six opulences, all beauty, inconceivable beauty. Whatever we see in this world, Srila Prabhupada explained to us, it is such a remote, distant uh, particle of that beauty, of the supreme source of everything. Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo. He explained to us. <clears throat> that Krishna himself appeared within this world to reveal his divine personality. And he spoke about his own self to the world as already proclaimed in the Vedas, which are also coming from him. And he declared that I am the source of everything. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matak sarvam pravartate From me everything emanates. Those who have sufficient intelligence, depth of knowledge, they worship me with their whole heart. So Srila Prabhupada introduced us to this divine personality. He gave us some, some bhakta jnana, that we are not some alien uh, a uh, fragmental part of simply this material creation, but we are eternal parts of His Divine Personality. We have our eternal relationship with Him. Jivar Swarup Hai Krishna Nitya Das That our eternal Swarup, our eternal form, our eternal constitutional state, which cannot be ever changed, is that we are Nitya Das of Krishna. And by doing this, by living in this conception in our life, we will be full of what, we, what it is that we are always seeking. That we are seeking happiness at every step. Because it is our nature to be enjoy, enjoying. But he taught us that this false process of enjoyment in this world of trying to directly enjoy You'll never find pleasure in this way. But by serving the Supreme Enjoyer, then you can find all pleasure. And Srila Prabhupada presented this as the actual solution to the entire world's problems. And he cited the shloka from Gita. Bhoktaram jagya tapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram 
Suhridam sarva bhutanam gyatvamam shantim ruchati. The whole world is seeking after peace. Everyone. United Nations being formed, trying to get this one thing of peace. But they do not know the formula. So Srila Prabhupada laid out the formula very systematically, in a, in a very concise way, by explaining all that you have to do, all that you have to know is three things. That Bhaktaram Jagyatopasa, that the supreme creator of this universe. He is the supreme enjoyer. Bhokta. What is he the enjoyer of? All of your sacrifices, all of your endeavors in life, everything that you're trying to do. It is for him. Because he has created everything. So, if you simply recognize this fact, then you can get peace. And, Sarva Loka Maheshvara. That all planets in this universe, everything that we can see and beyond what we can see, he is the supreme Ishwara, the supreme controller of everything. They, uh, they read a prayer to him which was composed by Prabhupada while he was on the Jaladuta ship coming to the western world. And this was composed in Bengali and they read it to uh, Srila Sridhar Maharaj and he reflected upon it. And there is a short statement I would like to read of his perception of Srila Prabhupada and what it is that he accomplished. He said, I consider him to be Shakti Vesh Avatar. And it is confirmed in his writings on his spiritual journey through the Atlantic. How he landed there in America and the nature of his beginning the movement, his intense degree of dedication to Krishna and dependence, and how much he made himself empty of any other desire than the order of his Gurudev, quite empty that Krishna came down to help him. And it is corroborated that Krishna worked on his behalf in his poem, prayer to the lotus feet of Krishna, we find him pleading with Krishna, my dear brother, your good fortune will come to you only when Srimati Radharani becomes pleased with you. Seeing his Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati as Radharani's delegation and his order as her divine service, he humbly submitted that he did not feel himself worthy or fit to discharge the divine service. So, he enlisted Krishna in the service of his guru. He had completely dedicated himself to the purpose. He was so earnest in his prayer to Krishna that he may discharge the duty that he has been given by his Guru Maharaj that the divine force, power, came down to help him. Otherwise, it is impossible. It is not a thing of the ordinary level that anyone will do, but the highest thing has been taken down to the lowest position so extensively. It cannot but be the divine power embodied and in a great intensity and magnitude. So, Shaktavesh Avatar, I cannot but take him to be so. So this was the vision that was revealed to us after the disappearance of our Guru Maharaj by his exalted God brother Srila Sridhar Maharaj. How we can fathom who is, who is this divine personality who has appeared in this world and actually literally within a very short time period spread the holy name of Krishna to every continent, to almost every country, establishing Vaishnav Dharma, Gaudiya Vaishnav Dharma, and liberating so many conditioned souls by the extensive, extensive distribution of millions of pieces of transcendental literatures. This is impossible for any human being to do. So therefore, it must be done by the divine power of Krishna himself, and specifically, Nityananda Prabhu. 
who is the distributor of the holy name. So Srila Sridhar Maharaj also explained that he is a Nityananda Prakash Shabdavesh avatar. That Nityananda Prabhu worked through him. So on this blessed day of his divine disappearance, I would like to say so many other things, but time is very limited and I've already gone over time. So I would like to offer my humble Dandavat Pranams millions of times at his divine lotus feet. And I also offer my humble Dandavat Pranams millions of times to the lotus feet of his divine servitor, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, my beloved Siksha Guru Dev, who is continuing to give the same mercy that Srila Prabhupada wanted to give to the entire world and to help all of the conditioned souls and to specifically help those who came to the lotus feet of Prabhupada so many years before and are now requiring so much help. So I beg for his mercy that he may enable us to understand his divine personality and character and that he may shower his mercy on us today. Gaura Prema Anandi Shila Esi Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai We would like to ask him to please glorify Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Mama Vishnamdaya Krishna Mishnamdaya Krishna Mishnamdaya Krishna Mishnamdaya Krishna Mishnamdaya Krishna Mishnamdaya Krishna Mishnamdaya I'll offer my respectful obeisances unto my spiritual master, Sri Bhakti Vinanta Swami Prabhupada, who is opening dark and eyes of the torchlight of transcendental knowledge. I also would like to thank my six year old. Gurus, His Divine Grace, Guru Swami, and also His Divine Grace, Shri Bhaktivedanta Narayan Swami, for continuing that transcendental eye operation to let the light come in. Um, I was just thinking while my senior uh, God and brothers and our sisters are speaking, uh, one thing, um, and that is the idea of example or action, live action. Uh, we know in the West that everyone likes to see a, a live action expose of any event that has a very... Intention was what his desires were for us. We had some devotees at Traveling Sankirtan as in the winter, and they had been going to colleges preaching, and they went to one university near Buffalo, and there was an exhibition in the music hall of the college where they had different Indian art things. And they had one deity of Krishna. I mean it was a it must have been a worshipable de you know, worship deity. It was, you know, Krishna's legs were separated and he was a beautiful, big marble deity and but he was on exhibition. And people had stuck incense in his toes. I mean it was very disrespectful. So the brahmacharis, we didn't have Radha and Krishna deities in Buffalo. We had Lord Jagannath only. And I had really desired to worship with Radha and Krishna. And every time we ordered a set of Radha and Krishna deities for Buffalo, some other temple got them. We never got them. And so the, his brahmacharis came back and said, there's a Krishna deity, we have to, we have to save him. He's being disrespected. We have to go and get this deity. And probably, he's, in our naivety, he's probably one of the six Goswami's deities that have been taken. And Prabhupada will, will know who's, who his Radharani is. And we had a whole misconception of, of how the deity can be worshipped. So um, we called, Prabhupada was in Los Angeles, and we called Los Angeles to ask Prabhupada whether we could do this. But we didn't get through. Instead, the, dev the devotee who was with Prabhupada, his servant, the secretary, said, oh, you don't need to ask Prabhupada. He'll let us do that. He, he, he'll be very happy. You just go right ahead. So we made a whole, um, we, it was winter time, and we put mud on the back of the license plate of the car. We dressed in car, you know, non-devotee clothes. We um, 
we had we, we went in to the university just when it was closing and we hid in the music lockers and then we came out and, you know it was we did this whole thing and we got the day <laughs> we got him it was this big marble krishna and we're in the car and i remember we're in the car and we had Chandan paste and Tulsi and oh, I was so happy that we had Krishna and I just knew Prabhupada would know who he was and, and when we got back to Buffalo we did an Abhishek and we put some cloth on him we took photos and then um, we wrote, well the temple president wrote to Prabhupada but I didn't, I, I at that point um, Prabhupada they were asking that not everyone writes to Prabhupada, that only temple presidents write to Prabhupada. But I didn't get on with my temple president. And I didn't believe that he could communicate the intense reason that I felt we should have run Krishna. And, and also the temple president hadn't been, I was there when they were stealing the deity. So I, I wrote a blow by blow account to Prabhupada of how we did this, how we, did everything, we hid in the lockers, and we were chanting Hare Krishna, and, and my conclusion was, Prabhupada, you're so kind, you're showing us how we can do everything for Krishna, even steal. And, and Prabhupada, when he got my letter, I don't think, when he got the temple president's letter, I don't think he fully understood, but when he got my letter, <laughs> it was, he really understood, and um, he, he telephoned immediately, and he said, you immediately return that thing. <laughs> you will undo everything I have been trying to do. I'm trying to bring, make men who are thoroughly honest. And you will just, he said, the first place they're going to look for a deity of Krishna is the Hare Krishna temple. And, you know, he explained how you can't worship deities, that his Krishna's foot was broke, and, you know, it was, it was already previously worshipped deity, and, you know, he just, he said, that when, when it's ready for Radha and Krishna to come, they will come and have patience. So, I realized then that actually there's so many <coughs> things that I didn't understand, I didn't have a clue about, and I thought I did. I thought it was so easy to understand what being a Vaishnava is, and I think I'm still going to with the help of Shri Ramana Thank you. Thank you. Very difficult to glorify Srila Prabhupada. Such an exalted soul. We sang this to Guru Charana Padma. The last is Nibeja, we should people with it. So whether we add or don't speak or don't speak, we know his glories are spreading all over the world. So when I first became a devotee, I came to New York Temple, and one of the first things I received was a book from Jadaran, and that started me on my way, actually. And uh, outside the temple, I was also reading a book of Bhagavad Gita. So from the time that I knew Srila Prabhupada, all the different experiences I had with Srila Prabhupada, I was always connected with his books. And I've always been a lover of books. So, one thing about the Guru is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is actually, the, Prabhupada told us, was a postgraduate study of Krishna consciousness. In the first chapter, he starts. Krishna Das Gaurav starts talking about what Guru is. This book, Chaitanya Charitamrita, is one of the most beloved books of the Vaishnavas. What Srila Siddhamara said, uh, of all books, he said this book, Chaitanya Charitamrita, is a completely rasic book from beginning to end. And the first two words in Chaitanya Charitamrita, of course, were Bandi Guru. This guru is plural, not singular. So for this reason, Shiksha Guru, Diksha Shiksha Guru, Shiksha Guru is also a very difficult concept to grasp. Guru is one, Guru is two, Guru is infinite. So 
So how can we understand what Guru is giving us? In this particular chapter, in the Bengali version of Chaitanya Charitamrita, they have different headings, different verses. And under Diksha Guru, it starts out with Jadyati Amara Guru, uh, Chaitanya Das. Tathapi Tathapi Jariye Tahara Ami Tahara Prakash And then it goes uh, Guru Krishna Guru Rupa Krishna Han Shastya Praman Guru Guru Rupa Krishna Guru Rupa Krishna Guru Rupa Krishna Guru Rupa Krishna Guru Rupa And then the next one is Acharya Man Vijanayan Navamani Tikara Chief. These three verses are listed under Diksha Guru. And then after this, and this is a heading, Diksha Guru. And then the next heading is Shiksha Guru. And under that Shiksha Guru, they start Shiksha Guru Te To Tani Krishna Saru. Mantani Ava Bhakti Shrestha E Duivu. So, the Shiksha Guru, Antaryami is Chaitya Guru, Bhakta Shesta is Mahanta Guru, and these are the two forms of Shiksha Guru. And as I started out, Guru is one, Guru is Harinam Guru, he gives the Harinam. So when we become initiated, we think, oh, we, we can understand our Guru very easily. But then, we understand after Haridam, Diksha, and then what does actually Shiksha mean? Shiksha. So it's a very, very different, difficult, difficult understanding of actually who Prabhupada actually was. When I first came in contact with Srila Maharaj, he was talking to me, we were talking, and I said, I, I see Prabhupada in you. Actually, I was kind of uh, remembering the uh, uh, quote that uh, Srila Prabhupada said in one speech about Srila Bhakti Pagyayakesha Maharaj in one festival. He said, I see my Prabhupada in you. And that was the reason he said he was taking sannyas also. So I was thinking as I told Srila Srinivas that, and he immediately said, yes, but we are two. We were also different. So, it's not that the spiritual master, the, your Diksha Guru, is the same as your Shiksha Guru, but he's the same and not different. This is a change of beta beta tantra. So it's a very, very difficult concept to understand. It's not actually logical. The mercy is all coming down. So to actually glorify Prabhupada properly would take lifetime, lifetime. <coughs> Even Brahma could not glorify his spiritual master properly. Brahma Vimohan Lila. Shri Maharaj once mentioned how could our Adi Guru, how could our original spiritual master Brahma make such a mistake in Brahma Vimohan Lila? He's our Guru. So, the, the glorified Prabhupada is not such an easy thing. But what I had in contact, what I got from the, my heart through Prabhupada was his books. My only service, practically speaking, was book distribution. And that, from the distributing books, also came into traveling Sankirtan, where you go traveling in these vans. And it seemed like when Prabhupada would come in, I would be on the road. Or when I'd come to India, probably I'd go to America, and back and forth like that. So one time I was laying in the van early morning. It was Model Arte, 4 o'clock in the morning, we were ready to get up. And I was feeling so much vipula, so much separation from Prabhupada, I could not even catch him. It was back and forth, back and forth. And then, all of a sudden, we put on this tape, Krishna Kirtana Garana Tanamaro Premamitam Bodhi Pi. 
um, simply as an observation about my Guru Maharaj. Um, <clears throat> first thing is, is that uh, from a personal point of view, I feel totally inadequate and unqualified to be his disciple and even to be in <clears throat> your association. Uh, sometimes I've made a joke that um, it's like uh, I've somehow won the spiritual lottery by having the mercy of becoming Swamiji's disciple. I don't mean to make light of it. In fact, I'm actually trying to show by that statement how merciful Srila Prabhupada was by truly living the example of a great Acharya, someone who broke the bonds of all of the cultural limitations, the cultural rules, um, the social regulations that would otherwise certainly keep someone like me from even being here in Raj uh, or in Varshana. The examples given, it's like a I think it's a sea turtle that somehow or another he's swimming in the vast ocean and just at the right moment he happens to stick his head up to the top of the water and he puts his head through the hole in a gourd which just happens to be floating there. So it's, it's something like that, the chances of coming in touch with such an exalted Mahabhagavad personality are <laughs> extremely rare. But I feel that it should be pointed out that, that it's not simply chance, but that um, that it's a, <clears throat> a manifestation of his mercy and a manifestation of the mercy of all of our charities. Uh, one day I was speaking with a godbrother who's a friend of mine, and I was telling him that um, although I had a good amount of association with Prabhupada when he was here, um, that actually I felt his presence much more potently and powerfully in my life after his disappearance back to Goloka. And he looked at me and he said, well, that's very, very strange because I don't feel that myself. And I somehow tried to explain to him how I could feel Prabhupada's presence in almost every turn of my life. Even when I had made the wrong turn, I could feel that Prabhupada took that turn with me and that he didn't neglect me. <clears throat> and that he was really always there to, uh, to guide me. <clears throat> and so I guess the, the final thing I would like to say about that is that um, probably the most uh, profound uh, manifestation of that mercy is the continued association of devotees uh, to hear and chant the holy name in the association of devotees in, in the Dham and most especially to have um, the guidance and love of Srimad Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj by Maharaj's association I've had a deepening of the understanding somewhat of how Guru is first and foremost a loving and compassionate being. Guru is, we sometimes have 
a great deal of on respect for the image of Guru because of what Guru is doing for us. But it becomes very clear to me as I go on that the most amazing thing about Guru is the pro profound, eternal sense of loyalty. <coughs> that uh, real guru will uh, never abandon us. So on um, <clears throat> this very important day, I think it's a very nice meditation to remember that the guru's commitment is very heavy, very weighty. It's like a mountain, it's immovable. And it's a mountain of love, actually. It's a mountain of affection and compassion. And a mountain of uh, patience. <clears throat> so I'm uh, <clears throat> a little emotional. Normally I'm not this emotional. <laughs> I just want to thank Srila Prabhupada for showing me his patience and compassion by giving me the association of Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj and all of his disciples who, for me, especially those wonderful Bridge Bhasi disciples, the brahmacharis that I've come to love and respect so much. Uh, I just want to thank my Guru Dave for giving me their association and reminding me about uh, how compassionate Guru really is. Srila Prabhupada. Shimati Radharani's Lotus Gate. I was a fish out of water, and I didn't care to live. My bucket was so full of holes, it leaked like a sieve. I tried for material happiness, and I did like the rest. Thinking this world is everything, I worked hard on my nest. I served my senses and manned my station, but inside I knew I needed a real vacation. Well, I packed my bags, and away I went. Looking here and there, I lived in my tent. I became more frustrated and couldn't keep pace. And finally I found His Divine Grace. There's more to this journey, because I still must learn to depend on Sri Guru and Garanga at every turn, to show love and affection to all I meet, and to allow the Lord in the driver's seat. I'm sure Sri Guru and Garanga will show me the way, but I must do my part and at their feet stay. Now it's wonderful to have a direction and goal, to someday live next door to the Supreme Soul. <coughs> There I'll happily move around in sport, and to be das anu das will be my only resort. Also, I'm feeling so fortunate to be in this sangha of aspiring devotees, advanced devotees, and we're all gathered around the lotus feet. We're all gathered around the lotus feet of this divine lotus flower, who has love, humility, compassion, tolerance, and so many other divine qualities. I think that just as no one can come to the end of Shri Shri Radha and Krishna's wonderfulness, in a similar way, no one can know the limit of Srila Gurudev's divine qualities. Others may think what they like, but for me, Om Vishnu Paramahansa Bhaktivedanta Narayam Raj is the perfect representative of Srila Nitya Lila Om Vishnu Paramahansa Srila Risi Bhaktivedanta Swami Raj. Because of this, I am feeling deeply happy and satisfied, but I am also confident that by increasing devotional activities and regularly associating with advanced devotees, all my problems and troubles will also decrease. Because Krishna consciousness offer, offers the greatest reward, it also requires the greatest sacrifice, which is complete and loving surrender to Sri Guru and Garanga's lotus feet. So I am uh, very unable to truly glorify Srila Prabhupada properly. I 
I'm greatly indebted to him and everyone here, and uh, I'm so happy to be here. Roger Collins. Good brother, Shabu Benef Prabhu. He'd arranged a very, very successful program. There's so many people there dancing and dancing and dancing, chanting. And afterwards, Shabu <coughs> uh, came up behind the stage, and Prabhupada was walking down the corridor, and he was staggering as though he was intoxicated, drunk. He had so much ecstasy from the chanting. There was another time in Paris, I think this was in Paris, there was uh, establishing deities. And the devotees, anyway, wherever it was, but the devotees hadn't got it together at all nicely. The flowers went together, so many things went together. Prabhupada was chastising like anything, chastising, chastising. And then in the end, it was time for him to take rest, and some devotee, Ribatanandan, was, was explaining. Some devotees were apologizing. He said, oh, it's all right, it's all right. And then he lay down his bed on his back, and he hugged his knees to his chest, and he was rocking backwards and forwards. He was going, ball, ball. Prabhupada loved chanting. And he also defeated all so many uh, false philosophies. He was so heavy against my bodies. In, in the beginning, the devotees were, what, why, why, who are these my bodies that he's preaching against? Who are these my bodies? Always shouting and, and uh, making such heavy statements about them. After a while, after a while they realized that they were the my bodies that he was, he was preaching against. Scientists, material science, atheism, all of these philosophies he cut to pieces, following in the tradition of his uh, his uh, picture guru, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Maharaj, who were the false philosophers, if they saw him coming down the street, they'd cross onto the other side. And uh, also his uh, beloved sannyas guru, Srila Prabhupada wrote to Ashura Gurudev, and he, when Ashura Gurudev, uh, Param Gurudev disappeared, and he said that. Uh, Srila Bhakti Prakyan Kesha Maharaj used to preach with sword in hand. So Srila Prabhupada was following on. He not only defeated false philosophies, but he also, he wanted to establish a firm footing in society. So he, he established Varnashram, or he tried to establish Varnashram. He tried to explain to the devotees about Varnashram that actually we don't need because we're devotees. But as preachers we have to establish. Devotees on foot, he couldn't understand you know, why would you do something that didn't involve people chanting Hare Krishna. But he explained that this, to, if somebody's mind is disturbed, then they cannot take up Krishna consciousness. So this is the means by which their minds can become peaceful. That is Varnashram. And then they could take up Krishna consciousness after that. So he had a conception of the whole, the whole society.
his 101st anniversary last year with one book, a commemorative volume of glorification and recollection called uh, Nityananda Prabhagadasya Gaudavani Prasharaha. And in this book, there was an offering from one devotee named Prishikashananda Prabhu. Maybe some of you know him. He joined in San Francisco in 1967, took initiation from Srila Prabhupada. And he was a deserter from the American army, which meant that if they caught him, he was up for 20 years. So the devotees being a little frightened and prone, but not being there at the time, but having gone to India, they decided to send him to India to meet Prabhupada, to join Prabhupada there. So he was sent to India, and when he got here, Srila Prabhupada had just left. So there was some instruction that he should go to Bon Maharaj. Bon Maharaj's camp, which he did. And then by some quirk of Leela or whatever it was, there was some, uh, some uh, crazy thing where uh, it was rumored that he took initiation from Bon Maharaj and then there was some uh, harsh exchanges and, and many devotees since that time have been caught up in all this, uh, these exchanges, which were only loving, affectionate exchanges, exchanges between God brothers, really. But in the interim, Rishikeshananda spent six years in Braj with no Western association. And uh, when he came back to Prabhupada in 73, uh, he had taken initiation from Bon Maharaj, but not Harinam, he took sannyas. And he came back to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada asked if he's coming back, he must give up his sannyas. He, gladly, he did that. Because he had some inspiration that he will not receive his spiritual form unless he goes back to his original guru. Some inspiration came to him like this. So he, he returned, and upon his return, somehow this Upadesha Amritam came into his hand. He was spending a few weeks with Prabhupada, I think in Vrindavan. And he just went to, he was going to Prabhupada daily, and just conversing in Bengali, because by that time he was well versed in Bengali. And Prabhupada loved to speak Bengali to someone. So he got this opportunity. He asked Prabhupada, what, why don't we do this Upadesha Amritam? So Prabhupada agreed, you come here every day and we'll do this. For the next two weeks, they did it. And specifically, in the eighth verse, Krishna Krishnananda was asking Prabhupada, well, your, your disciples are all criticizing Gaudiya Mahat as Sahaja, because they're into this Astakaliya Lila and all this thing, this uh, precious uh, uh, Ras, pastimes of Krishna. But here in this verse, Rupa Goswami is giving, shouldn't we mention Astakali Lila? And Prabhupada said, of course, this is the objective. We should mention this. So that is the reason that you find that a that purport in the eighth verse is full of that. Is it the grace of Rishikeshananda and Prabhupada, uh, and Rishikeshananda prompting Prabhupada, please, can we put this in? And Prabhupada responding, naturally. This is naturally this should be put in. So, uh, Uru Krav Prabhu asked me to relate that to you. I have related it. I just like to say one more thing, and that is that um, uh, when uh, Sri Maharaj made this astounding uh, pronouncement that Swami Maharaj is Shaktivish Avatar, I happened to be sitting there and I was also, some, I thought I didn't hear right. What did I hear? And I was just stunned, as well as all my godmothers sitting there. We didn't know what to do. And it was Govinda Maharaj who came over and said, but Shaktivish Avatar of whom? And this is how we know it was Nityananda. So this is uh, our our glorification last year was Nityananda Prabhagarasi Gauravani Prasharaha. That Vani from Nityananda's uh, what to say? Shaktivedanta. <laughs> uh, Namo Mahavadan Naya Krishna Prem Padaya Krishna Naya Krishna. Today I speak in 
plant of the tree and told them that, oh, come here, fold it your hands, not here, here. <laughs> so he described all Parnasam Dharma. But in the light has told, it has been told. That, oh, Krishna is Supreme Personality of God, God. Here also you he can. And he is Yuga. He is Dharma Pat. Jada Jada Hi Klani Dharmasya. Klani Bhavati Bharata Apirthanama Dharmasya Tadatmanam Sija. Paritranaya Sadhunam Vinashaya Jo Dushkrita Dharmasan Stavna Dharmasya Shampuan. So he has come to establish Paranashya Dharma. How he can cross and spoil Parnasam Dhar by dancing with so many others' wives and making them naked to come in front of him. So you are defending Krishna. And that is why they have both worried. Can you say first is right or second is right? If you are in the side of first, you can raise your hand. Who was, what first was saying, was it right or not? If it was right, you can raise your hand. What second was telling? If it was right or not? Raise your hands if he was right. Oh, well. One few. So, once I was telling these facts in Mathura, in the glorification of Swami Bhakti Vedanta Swami, at the time of Sannyas day, who took Sannyas in Mathura, Vishwarupa, I was glorifying him. I think most of them have not. Uh, understood my feelings. That is why they are not raising head, uh, not nothing. To it. So they have not listened and gone so deep. That is why they could not say. Try to go deep. If you are not going to, you cannot glorify your Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Maharaj, Guru Dev. So I was telling there that. that uh, Maharaj, Maharaj. In a few days, to please his Gurudev, to please Rupa Goswami and to please his ancestric Guru Parampara, who went in Western countries, Eastern countries, on the whole globe of the world, and in no time he preached everywhere. Name Sankirtan. And the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the instructions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he established so many centers, preaching centers, so many temples, so many gurukuls, so many, and he printed so many books. Oh, it is a very glorious thing. But I think this was not his topic, top of glorification. Any printer in India or the world, they print lakhs and lakhs and crores and crores books. And they said everywhere. So Swamiji had done this. He had not printed, but he has explained Bhagavad Gita. They are given explanation of Sri Madhuhagvata. He has given an explanation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu so deeply. It is very rare persons to go deep and to read and realize this. I am telling all these things in simple way, but very rare persons are realizing all these things. So, he did it. And it is wonderful that he preached all. 
<coughs> perhaps if you will also agree with my this statement that in world there are so many publishers who are printing so many lakhs and lakhs books and distributing whole world. <coughs> but not like Chaitanya Chaitamri, Srimad Bhagavatam and all these things. So this is this uh, once were so glorious. Indeed, but I know also that he, his glorification is not highest. For which he came? He came to give the champagne for which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come. For which Krishna came in the shape of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sachinandan Gaudari. That is the beauty, golden beauty and in terms of gold of Srimati Radhika. Vishnu Tattva Advaita Acharyas and all other any coordination could have established Yogadharma Namshan Krishna. In Chaitanya Chaitamrit it has been told that Yogadharma Pratishtha is not the work of Krishna not the job of Krishna. Krishna is Paramakarun and he is Rashi and merciful. As he is merciful, he came to sprinkle his mercy to give to give a Vidya Dirma Java. Pujana. To expect the mercy, to give this Radhanuga Vartma, Radhmat Bhakti Karite Pracharan, Patishchantya Mahaprabhu came. And this was also secondary. What was prominent? Prominent was Radhaya Pradayamaya Kirti Shoma Vahudiya. Shokanchascha madan bhavata kirti shau vetni roba tad bhavata samajani shakti sachi karma shindu haridu. So this was the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is, this is the mission of Krishna to taste the three things. And perhaps you all know, and Swamiji has a plan also in Chaitanya Chaita with this thing. This was the supreme cause of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to uh, taste these things and secondary was to distribute Radhvartma, Radhvartma. So, to establish Yugadhar, to establish Nam Sankirtan Bhav, was the primary reason. Secondary, not secondary, and the priest. But all are in this state that they cannot go beyond this limit. So they understood that this was the main thing and topest glory of Swamiji to preach Namshan. But you should note one thing. <coughs> you know, so many disciples of Swami, like Bhavan, Bhavan I cannot, I don't want to take their names. They preached Nem Samkrita. They were the commander-in-chief for this. Also distributing in books. Also making temples, less and less dollars they have collected for this. But if it was the main object of doing Swamiji, then where are now the, the those who did the all Now where they are, you can make them things. So only to play on harmonium and madanga and with ladies doing and only for not only to Pachuku Dharma, 
Who was in the line of Prabhu Goswami? Who was in the line of Ramnath Das Goswami? Who was in the line of Vishwanath Jagwati Thakur? Not from Thakur. Pande Vidya Abhushan Pad, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Shira, Bhakti Shiddhan Sarsati Goswami Thakur, and in the line of our Guru Dev Shira, Nitya Vira Prishth, Om Vishnu Parshish, Bhakti Shiddh Pragyanti Sarsati. He was not uh, any free or swayambhu, independent acharya. He was, I think that he was told that he was the hand of Siddha Prabhupada. That hand went all over. So he was hand of Siddha Prabhupada. And Prabhupada is the hand of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But sometimes we forget. So he came to give the same message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Goswami. He came, like Chaitanya Siddha Prabhupada told, Bhakti Siddhan Sarsati Goswami told, his Radha Kunda he told there, that there in Kartik month, when the Parikrama was there, he stayed there in tents around Radha Kunda and Shyam Kunda. He told that, I am sorry that, my whole life has been gone in cutting jungles of my Swahaji, Yashaki, Beki and all. Really I wanted to give something. Hmm? The service of Radha and Krishna. If you are doing whole time all these things, then you are uh, losing your time. And at one day you will be nervous body. And you will be deviciated from this thing. So you should know that our aim and object are of our whole ancestral chronology, Guru Parampara, and to follow Krishna. To serve Radha Krishna and Pantyuga, this frame and love, to give this frame and love to hold worldly gifts. So I think this was the main object and mission and message of Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj. The same message, what is in our Guru Maharaj. So this is most top of his glorification that he wanted to do. But I am worried that some his so called followers could not follow me. And they began totally against me. Like I told in Kuala or two person in Bigri. He wanted to, first wanted to glorify Krishna, only that he killed Bhutana, so big death. But this was very, very little difficult. Advanced study, secondary study. Graduate study. Graduate study. Graduate study. Graduate study. Why he told? It means that he wanted to establish that. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Malli Gopi Lav had been told Shukri. The message of Srimad Bhagavatam is not to glorify so much Krishna, but that Prem, Gopi Prem, how they love Krishna. So in whom this highest topic of Prem is there, in Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam ka go kya? Pati Padya Vishen. Go be praying. Pande Nanda Prajishtya Padre Numa Bhikshna Chata Hari Kothod Gita Punat Konatya Aho Bhagyam Aho Bhagyam Nanda Go Prajau Shama Janamitram Paramanandam Purna Brahma Shana why we go be frying gobies here and there? Yes, I go be frying Krishna here and there. There are two things to understand. I will explain it in other classes. Very in a little form, I am telling this. There are two tasks. One is tattva. Like Chaitanya Chaitanya, it has been told. Chaitanya 
Vishnu Mahaprabhu asked him from Raya Ramananda. I want to know Krishna Tattva, Radha Tattva, Prem Tattva and Rasha Tattva. So there is Tattva, Krishna Tattva and in other is a Rasha Tattva. By Tattva Drishti, by the angle of vision of Rasha, you should have like this. One day he came at Sikya Sakti Kodi on Buddha and he was standing in front of my Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj speaking him, Hello, our Prabhu, what is spoiling your life? So how? So Guru Maharaj told, he was a difficult person, why are you not preaching throughout the world? Only you are publishing back to God head, but Trita, after what name? Why are you not preaching? Why are you not preaching the message of Srila Sarsati Khaun and Sikhi Tanda Mahaprabhu? What can I do? Sai Maharaj told. Then Guru Maharaj spoke. Please take Sanna and preach every day. At that time, his God brother, Parampudhuva Sri Muni Maharaj, was staying at Mathurama. Then he told, If Muni Maharaj takes Sanna, I said, <laughs> but Muni Maharaj at that time he was 90 years old. Muni Maharaj came about 95. <laughs> then Muni Maharaj told, taking Sarsanna, what can I do? I am very old man. What shall I do? Take in Sanna? <laughs> but if I do take Sanna, then Avaya who will take Sanna? Then I shall take Sanna. <laughs> he can do many things. He can prajaya everywhere of the world. That will be the benefit of the world. For the benefit of the world, I take Sarnasi. Even I am very old. <laughs> so, at the time of his Sarnasi, both were agreed to take Sarnasi. If one was a Naran man or that, 59, about 1954. I came in March 1958. And I was saying from uh, every day to 59 million <coughs> at Mothra. Then you know that no, no, no. Uh, you to do. The Punjwa, Abhay Mahu, Abhay Prabhu, and Punjwa Sanatana Prabhu, Dukshana, and my Divan Master gave them name to Muni Maharaj, Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Muni Maharaj and to Kutivasa Lahayavu, Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj. And all these things performed by Kutivasa Naran Maharaj according to order of my Divan Master. <coughs> And Pujiva Naran Maharaj helped him in every purpose. After few months, he studied America by French. And he preached there very nice. And he feels so many misery for this. In spite of this, his preaching was successful. And 
so many you had exact names. So Kainam, Tangin, so many Kainas, so many Western people, and so Kainam, like all of these. But this is the and very few years, he breathed very beautiful. Ketan Mahaprabhu told us, Prithivita Ajitato Nagaradi Gram, Sabatra Prachar Hoyve Purna. Sri Ketan Mahaprabhu fulfilled his ambition by Shiva Sami Mata. And his divine master, the Bhakti Siddhanta Sasa Thakur Prabhupada. You know, Prabhupada said in foreign countries, Swami Parapujwa Siddhanta Bhakti Vedanta, Van Maharaj, Sishama Bhakti Pradeep, Dikta Maharaj, Siddhanta Bhakti Sarang Ushay Maharaj, He sent them to preach in other countries. So, Prabhupada Sarasajabhu wanted the all people of the world will come to the lotus feet of this Lord Chaitanya Dev. And they will be personal. And he wanted that this material world will be open up. All the people who will chant Harina and will be the devotee of Chaitanya and Radha. All will be get very happiness and enjoy happy. <coughs> so, Param Pitjwal, Siddha Swami Maharaj, please, very nice everywhere. Um, successful. He was successful in life. For the inspiration of my Guru Maharaj, Mithyavad Sri Sai Maharaj explained and translated in English Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Sri Srimad Bhagavadam, Sisterman Ketan Chetan 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 in Western or Eastern people will be so many happiness <coughs> from this. So, Swami Maharaj came in this world for the benefit of the uh, people of the world. <laughs> and within few words, in the matter of strength, how he be and uh, that in the old world. In old age, he is in the world of 70, 71 as a So I am uh, <coughs> doing nothing, but I am a young lady. My English is not so good. <laughs> so I am very <laughs> But I am this, but I am getting common with it for Last of all, I am alien of I My new world of my own wishes to my Guru Maharaj, to my Swami Maharaj. Thank you.
I would like to request our dear Dr. Sir, Jim Donald D. Lockheed and D.D. to please come and glorify the Oh, the parents say, AJ, it may be that it will be anyone taking initiation from our Guru Dev Arshada Prabhupada. It may be. And he may be of a hundred and thousand years old. <laughs> and anyone may be of little age. He will, the junior will give respect. But uh, Jerry, Jerry is always safe for him. Those who are highest in serving and propagating the more uh, hurtful things to others, they are so much Not according to generality and seniority or age or whether he is disciple of anyone. Jay Bhaje Shaybara. That is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked anyone uh, that uh, your father is your son or this son is father. Mukunda. Raghunanda. I am Mukunda. <laughs> you know Chaitanya Chet in Chaitamiti that he asked Raghunanda Mukunda and his son was Raghunanda. His heart asked Raghunanda's father Mukunda that uh, you are father or Raghunanda is father. Then what he told? Oh, he told to his son that my son is my father. Raghunandan, my father. Why? Because I came in Bhakti land by the grace of my son. So all knows that, oh, he is Raghunandan father, not Mukunda son. So anyone, whether he is not direct disciple, but he afraid he is serving so much. And Jai Bhaja Shri Bada Bhakti. But he is very qualified person. I give respect to him. So we should try to give honor to anyone according to the level of bhakti. But even though we will read, uh, honor also senior Krishna. But according to seniority and generality not, but uh, those who are speaking, I have one name. He should be honored by Pranam, by my mind. Those who are uttering always <coughs> having diksha, they should be honored with uh, heart and mind, both and by body. And those who are so much high, nothing to criticize anyone, no irsha, no envy or anything, always, always testing Krishna Bhakti and serving Radha and Krishna conjugal Ashtakadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadhyadh
will surely glorify their good deeds. But uh, I become so much happy if outsider or those who are not disciple of my Guru and if they are glorifying my Guru then I become so much so I see that uh, you should be like because you have a program that our the disciple of Swami Jivani speak but I also, I also want that those who are not disciple in their eyes in their heart what is about Swamiji, you should also know and you should be more happy. <laughs> that is why I am telling uh, other persons, those who are not direct Shishya or not Shishya at all, like Pajatak Maharaj, Vaishnava Maharaj, also I told him. So you should not think that uh, you are losing time or waste of time. No? Oh, I want that Ramchandra Prabhu should also speak Well, it is very difficult to glorify Swamiji Shri Prabhupada. But one thing I would like to share with all you, my inner feeling that before coming to ISKCON, that is in contact with Srila Prabhupada, I was a Pakka Mayavadi. <laughs> And Pakka because since then I have never come across Vaishnavism. Therefore Pakka. I had no opportunity to have alternative in my life than Mayavad. I had that all the scriptures and all the thoughts have one plan only. There is a Nirakar Brahm and we have to merge in him. That's all. My all, all calculation was just as a huge fire and a huge water put together, they will make a very small amount of vapor. Similarly, all the things of this world are made up to opposite things. When they are put together, it will become shunne and we will merge in it. <laughs> all the atoms are made of electrons and protons. When they will get together, it will be a dark star and we will go into it. This is all. <laughs> so, I was fully aware of this Mayavad philosophy and used to profess it and used to contemplate it. Since upon a time, when I had a desire to give some charity in the name of Krishna and I happened to go to his con and they made me life member in installments, they gave me books. <laughs> They gave me books and I started Prabhupada's books reading. So far I had been reading that if each and every living entity is undivided and uh, integrated part and parcel of God. Because he, finally he merged in God. But when I read Srila Prabhupada, he said living entity is a different part and parcel of God. I said, but <laughs> it's against what I have been studying and, and knowing. Jeeva Bhagavan ka vivin ansh hai. Living entity is vivin ansh of Lord. And I was so far reading Jeeva is abhin ansh of Lord. Here every, I used to a circle that line wrong. I will write it wrong. <laughs> it took me nine months. Because I, I became like member in installment. When my all installments were filled, then I could understand that living entity is the part and parcel of <laughs> Parcel, parcel of Krishna, uh, Krishna but separate. So the important point is this, that Vaishnavi's philosophy was so strong that when I was in Mayavad, I could not give the answer that if living entity is a bin ansh, then why is he suffering? I could not answer this question. But Vaishnavi's 
Western philosophy gave me answer and I was satisfied. I adopted it, but after one year mental struggle, after one year of mental struggle, I could adopt it. Then this philosophy became so much intimate with me that I started reading Srila Prabhupada's book. I tell you that after that time, that is, it was in 1985, and in, within six months, very miracle took place in my life. I took initiation in Iskon, Harinam, and I read all Srila Prabhupada's books. Now I am sharing my views with you. Please try to understand what I mean to say. When I read Srila Prabhupada's book, the most book I liked was Prabhupada's book, you must be knowing, Teaching of Lord Chaitanya. Wonderful book. And when I read this book, I, I very, very speedily grasped that we belong to Golok Vrindavan, our eternal associate of Radharani. This thought came in me. But the moment I went in this con, and started working with this con, they gave me other job. Preaching, distributing, temple, this and that. And whatever I read went inside my uh, thought. And my different type of thoughts come and I stopped reading those books. Only some for portion of the thing which, was, which I was reading. That was how to preach, how to go outside, how many members we can bring, how many money which we, which we can collect. This became the part and parcel of my Krishna consciousness. And as there was a section of time when we enjoyed it also. But gradually, gradually, I am very much thankful to Iskon that within two years, I happened to, to see uh, Pujibar Narayan Maharaj within two years. It was Parikrama time, Kartik month, and these days, when Iskon Parikrama was going from Barsana to Nandapurgaram and they invited Maharaj and I eh? in Prem Sarovar. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in 87 and at that time Maharaj spoke such a nice Harikatha and of Srila Jeev Goswami, Srila Vishwanath Chakrapath Goswami, you know, in Hindi, I can say, Meri aankhe khuli ki khuli rahi aur movie khula ka khula rahi gaya. My eyes remain open but I am listening it, I found as if I am listening from my all limbs. My eyes were listening, my ears were listening, my mouth were listening, everything is listening. And I was very much, very much moved. And since then I started doing associating with Maharaj continuously. Then in Krishna Balram temple there was a discussion with the devotees there that sometimes it happened in the preaching of communism Three statements came to Srila Prabhupada that communists are preaching, they are having three uh, substances, three slogans that books are the basis, utility is the principle and preaching is the essence. And purity is the force. I, I took these sentences very, very seriously and sincerely. But gradually, gradually, some struggle came in my mind. If preaching is essence, then we can see Jesus Christ preached communism as much as possible and it's more spread than our Krishna consciousness. This means Jesus Christianity is and these missionaries are still preaching far more than the Krishna conscious movement. This means preaching is essence but they are more superior. Even if we say Rajanish was preaching at that time too much high, and transcendental meditation, you must have heard the name of Mahesh Yogi. Then I was coming nearer and nearer to Maharaj. I came to know the real essence is not preaching is essence. Preaching of essence is the essence. <laughs> preaching is not essence. Preaching of essence is the essence. Our characteristic, characteristic of our parampara, characteristic of our sampradaya, of Srila Prabhupada was that we were preaching the essence of all the Vedas. That is to become the servitor of Srimati Radharani. In the disciplic succession has become Dasa Anudas. This was our preaching and no one on the earth so far preached with this thing. And all the sages they came and they preached this and that, most of that, they preach how to 
influence themselves on the people. But Srila Swamiji took the essence of the preaching to the whole world that all the Vedas are saying that not only Krishna is the Supreme Personality of our Godhead, though this is the threshold of the essence of the philosophy, but inside if we go crossing this threshold, we will see the preaching of essence is that this Krishna is going his head on the lotus feet of Radharani. And we have to go and do service to such divine couple. This is the preaching essence and we have to and it's, it's assimilate this essence with us and we have to line up with our life in this way. God Revan. Saying that I wasn't expecting to uh, <coughs> have an opportunity to offer my feelings and push gradually to Shilabhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Maharaj. So uh, ज्ञानमिश्रा आज हम लोग बड़े सौभाग्यवान हैं कि आज भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी जी का हम लोग फिर भाव तिथि हम लोग मनाने जा रहे हैं मैं हिंदी में बोलता हूं क्योंकि बहुत से ऐसी चीजें हैं जो अंग्रेजी में नहीं बोल सकता तो इसलिए राम चंद्र जी इसको अंग्रेजी में we know the glory of the people that uh, Swami has taken part on the very date of Nanda Utsa. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. In this world, it ascends and took birth on the very day of Nam. And what about his departure from this world? In the month of Karthi, in the month of Karthi, the duty of this month, month is Srimati Radhika, Radha Damodar, Damodar Mandir, Niyam Sheva, so how it is good? Or he Madhura me Vishwaru Khaup ke din on the very day when Vishwaru Prabhu took sannyas I don't know where Vishwaru took sannyas but I know that he took sannyas, Swamiji took sannyas in Mathura. In Mathura, in Madhupan, and he took sannyas by very, very affectionate sister, near and dear. Nitya Lila, Pravishtu Om Vishnu Bhat, Srishman Bhakti Prakyan, Kishwa Maharaj. One of the most, what, uh, near and dear associates of Siddha Prabhupada. They were both friends and you have heard so many times that you are not willing to take Shanya. He always he was fearing that uh, when he took Harinam and Harina, he was fearing so much that in Srimad Bhagavat it is written, those who take Harina and they practice Bhakti Yoga. At once Krishna takes this, 
takes everything but with him. Jada Jashyanu Pranami Harisheta Dhamrashani. So he was fearing that if I am chanting and preparing and practicing Bhakti Yoga, it may be that Krishna can take my whole wealth, all worthy things, and my wife, children, and everything. And it became so. But he never uh, gave up all this practice. At last he. At first he was the manager of any medical company, Bengal Chemicals, he was manager. But he came out of that company and he made himself a factory in medical factory in Allahabad. Also it was well. He made a very big shop, medical shop, where Jawaharlal Nehru the first chief minister of first prime minister of India and his daughter Indira Gandhi used to go to the shop. But he is also well. And now going here and there, being a medical representative, but also well. He tried so much, but he never it, it was good. At last he came to Mathura and he made with me and after that he met to our Guru Devi's friend. He was a Buddha friend of all. And our Guru Maharaj requested him that you should preach in the whole world. You are so much qualified. And how we accepted it for Jatak Maharaj, you know all. And thus he took sannyas in Mathura on the day of Vishnu. And then, by the mercy of his Guru Dev, he went to Western countries and very quickly he spread all. I will tell all these things in the no, yeah. detail afterward, but I want to tell only one or two things in brief. <laughs> Nowadays, article of the reporting and fiction, article those were felt from sannyas and other things. Now they are making a group of what read speaker. All the public persons, not any bona fide question of are not there, but they are made a group. And so many now, those who are going to fall down, they are going to support them and making in their, their groups. Their group may go. But the rhythmic word is not in a Vedas in the sense of Guru. <coughs> Rhythmic word has been used only in fire sacrifices for worldly, to fulfill worldly, worldly desires. If anyone has known, son, if anyone wants a reputation, if he wants to control world, they can do rice to a or so many jabka, and there are so many kinds of jabka. So only to fulfill the worldly desires, requirements. In Vedas, it has been given something that you should do that fire sacrifice. And for this only reason, anyone can accept a ritri. Who will accept the ritri? Those who don't know Vedas, Ved Mantra, they cannot recite Ved Mantra. Jodo Vedo ka mantra ne uchara ka sakte hai. Jodo ki vidhiyo ko nahi jante hai. Those who don't know uh, rules and regulation, how a fire sacrifice should be done and how it can be fulfilled. Like Maharaj Dasarath, 
they accepted the rhythmic like महाराज दशरथ नॉट नोइंग द रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन हाउ टू मेक वेदिस हाउ टू रिसाइड मंत्र हाउ टू डू सम वेद एंड ऑल दिस सो ही एक्सेप्टेड द रिटी ही वाज इग्नोरेंट ऑफ दैट एंड सो दोस वेयर नोइंग ऑल दिस थिंग्स एंड वेयर दे वर वेरी क्वालिफाइड इन वेद ऑफ मंत्र एंड ऑल नोइंग ऑल दिस थिंग्स दे देयर एंड सेकंड आई द रिटी सो दशरथ महाराज जी ने यहाँ और लोगों ने रितिक किए इन रितिक देर आर सिक्स टेन काइंड्स ऑफ रितिक इन सिक्सटी सिक्स टेन फोर ऑफ प्रॉफिट चार उसमें प्रधान हैं दो नोज ऑल दिस थिंग्स बेदास दे कैन रिसाइड मंथ दे नो ऑल द रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन हाउ टू फुलफिल दैट इज दैट दे आर एक्सपर्ट सो ए पर्सन इज नॉट एक्सपर्ट He chooses and takes everything. The health of it, but there is no any eh, mentioned anywhere that the rhythmic is guru. When sacrifice is completed, then rhythmic is not rhythmic. His work is finished. And when he will do any another sacrifice, then he will again choose for rhythmic or six. They will complete, and again they will be changed. After jagya first sacrifice, there will be no relation with rhythmic and that disciple. But in Vedā, we see just a devi, para bhakti. जहा देवी तथा गौ तस्ते कथिता प्रकाशन रिलेशन बिटवीन रिथिक एंड जजमान जजमान But the relation with guru and disciple is permanent. For life and for for life, it is transcendental, and that is why in Vedas it has been told. Those who give the tattva of Krishna, that Krishna is supreme personality of all, and we are eternal servant of Krishna. But by misfortune, we have forgot this, and we are suffering. Uh, in this world, in the chain of birth and death, sufferings and sorrows. So those who will help us and give a relation between Krishna and disciple, Jiva, conditional soul, really he is Guru. He is not anything. So in any parampara of Vaishnavas, from Brahma, from Rudra, from Sanat Kumar, and uh, निपादित और एनिमल, no reason प्रथाय इस दे आर प्रथाय सिस्टम नया मार्ग है, even in माया मार्गी सिस्टम in गुरु परंपरा no reason पड़ इस दे आर, तो इसलिए भक्ति लाइन में in गुरु परंपरा लाइन reason is not it is not a body to fill his worldly desires guru helps us and gives us the relation with, with krishna to that vision for permanent transcendent soul for always so this relation is not temporal and that is why in vedas and anywhere which i have not written about rithi in the line of some are now telling that uh, there is no any qualified guru 
and for us in the world there will be no guru so he is the last guru but the vedanta is but i think it is quite false still he has not written anything about this he was in guru parampara brahma matva gauriya vaishnava sampradaya in our guru parampara he cannot tell like this if any one is telling like it is by all you should not believe it <coughs> it may be that is any of his this i could may write a letter to all their god brothers the guru dev has told like this uh, read it he can follow but at once he has given explanation for the uh, explanation that uh, we should <coughs> rithik means the pratinidhi <coughs> representative of any guru and what is that in our parampara we know that there is the charu there is shiksha there is shaman guru there is bhajan shiksha guru chaitya guru Guru, but what about us? There are so many Guru that why we need Riti? No need. Of. We can take her from Shiksha Guru. If we can take the help of Bhajan Guru, sometimes Shiksha Guru is more elevated and more qualified than Shiksha Guru. And this is Bhagavad Parampara. We know that. Uh, Sarv Tanoda, he is not in our Guru Parampara life. In Muda Budhishe, in Muda Budhishe, in Thul Budhi ke dvara, wo hamare hamare Guru Parampara mein nahi hai. Guru Nanak Das mein, Das mein. He was disciple of any Maya Badi in. Maranasi, and he was a Brahmachari. He came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted him like Lalita. And उनको सबसे ऊंचा गुरु बताया। I don't know the name of the guru of Raya Ramana. हरि दास का तू, कृष्ण दास का भी राज पश्चामी। I also know that Brahma is Krishna Shiksha Guru of Brahma also and Chaitanya Guru. So we can adopt Shiksha Guru, Shiksha Guru, Bhajan Guru, and all other things. Why do you think? They think it is not in the line of permanent Guru Parampara. So you should not believe that. Guru Parampara may Ritu Kapo be a star in here. वो रिक्वायरमेंट के लिए पूर्ण करा दिया बस खत्म इसलिए आजकल कितने लोग दोष हुआ फल एंड डाउन एंड देवान तो बी गुरु एक्चुअली पर नो टेलिंग बाई देर नो माउथ दैट आई एम गुरु पर टेलिंग दैट आई एम गुरु हु हैज एक्सेप्टेड Swami Ji has accepted the blind guru. Ritvi, जबी Swami Ji ने इनको रुत्ति बनाया, तो Swami Ji ignorant person थे और जबी तो बहुत बड़े ऊंचे वाले होते हैं, पेड़ को जानने वाले, तो रुत्ति जो इनको बनाया, तो क्या बोली ऊंचे हो गया ये कुछ नहीं जानते थे। I want to tell that if Swami Ji has accepted any Ritvi, then he should be not no not uh, he was not qualified at all not knowing veda shastra and any books like shrimad bhagavata chaitanya charitamrita he was quite ignorant that is why he elect, uh, accepted and selected everything so it is absurd for him anyone cannot tell that he was ignorant of all these things and he has accepted it so who made this rhythmic system? So it is quite false, is that right? Rhythmic. 
I, I like it. And with translation, English translation, it has been published. You can see how he was related to me and my group, Dev and other things. You can see. So, Tabika Maharaj, Kunjabar Tabika Maharaj, no. And he has sat to him also. And he has sought help in so. So, he is well known to your group, Dev. So, he will speak a little two words about it.
Pujya Bharata Vikram Maharaj, myself like vice president. And he wanted to create any post for coming future Acharya of Gaudiya Vedanta Samhiti. So he wanted to create a new post. And he created and made Gaudiya Vedanta Samhiti ka superintendent. Kya uska? अधिक्षण <laughs> teachings and instruction to us. And that is why still today we are all together. It may be some difference of opinion of any Sadasya, no harm. But like after uh, departure of Srila Prabhupada, all that part. After departure of Pujyapad, Madhu Maharaj, they began to find something. Still there is some. After departure of Pujyapad Bhakti Vilas Tith Maharaj, also great viral sign. Still so many cases in court cases, even in high court. <coughs> but by the mercy of a special mercy of देश महापुरुष या भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वत हैं, भक्ति रूप सिद्धांति महाराज। Also it is a मिनाकर, आहे कोजलेस, कोजलेस, कोजलेस मस्सी of गुरु दे या तो भी तो still we know how to respect all God brothers, elder God brothers and Yes. We give respect to all. You can see all these things. If you are not going to give respect, honor to your elder God brothers and juniors, so much affection that anyone cannot be together. So all this one I taught this. And he was called this merciful. That is why still we give respect to the elders and brothers and we are called. I want that uh, our juniors should learn these things. Sometimes they become furious, but they should learn all these things. These educates. You know that sometimes Pujapati become Maharaj myself. Discuss so many things each other, calling arguments each other. But I have so much respect for him, and he has also uh, caused this much to me. <coughs> so we are all grateful. So much grateful to Bhaktesh Mahaprabhu. In the bhakti, nitya nila, pravish, om, vishnu, bhaj, vishnu, sridha, bhakti, sviru, siddhanti, maharaj. So today is the birthday and I think only the disciple of Siddha Kukutya Bhasitanti Maharaj is Arashananda Prabhu. But he should not think that he is alone. We are all we all accept him like you. So he is not alone, but we are all disciples of Param Pujyabad, Bhakti Rush, Siddhanti Maharaj. Because he, Siksha Guru is not less than Diksha Guru. Diksha Guru and Siksha Guru both are, if they are in the same category, we think like this. Once, I will tell only some little, in every something because our service 
our subject is here, Srimati Rasa Glorification. And also, we are going to start to go late. So, I will have to tell some to you. I will speak in Hindi or Bengali and anybody will talk to you. But I want to tell you one thing that we do all uh, daily Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Acharya Singha Rupine Sri Srimad Bhakti Pragyan Keshava Dinamine Ati Mata Charitraya Swasitana Chapaline Jeeva Dukhe Sadarataya Nam Pradayin Do you know that who has composed this? <laughs> he has also written the Mangala Arti of Arti of Our Gurudeva. I am so beautiful. And with Sarkar. So you should know sometimes he it seems that he is against me or anyone. And not really kind of, but you know, the honor of me. Also, <coughs> yesterday he had told something after my departure when I went to retire to take this round. He told the glorification of Swami. But he told something that uh, I think that uh, someone has not understand correct. Something they are thinking that oh he has not he has done some against of Swami. Because he told that uh, <coughs> about Prabhupada name he told. But you should no, very strong that he has not done anything against him. Uh, all these home temple persons, devotees, are out of his home. They call from his temple. No army if this, this Shakun is telling him that he is Prabhupada. And Prabhupada is a Bhakti Vedanta Swami, not Prabhupada. <coughs> it is not against Shastra. Everywhere for Guru Dev it has been told Prabhupada. No harm. But I think, I, I wonder that why any Eskon disciple of Swamiji is not taking the name of Prabhupada himself. Why? Can you tell anyone? Understood what I am going to do. If any disciple has a right result to call his Guru Dev Prabhupada. But I wonder that knowing all these things, why anyone of his home has still not this, uh, this title of Lord Fat. That they can themselves, Sripa, uh, Acharya Path, Bhakti Path, and so on. Why not Vishnu Path? Why not Prabhupada? I want this answer. But uh, I have not received any answer from anyone. But I know that he, after the departure of Saupath, or in the when he was still in this world. If any 